Charles on the old Leonardo, this Louvre of St. John as precursor with Pico della Mirandola. Let a certain holy ambition invade the mind, so that we may not be content with mean things, but may aspire to the highest things, and strive with all our force to attain them. For if we will to, we can. He who is a seraph, that is, a lover, is in God, and more, God is in him, and God and he are one. Though the smile is ambiguous in Leonardo's notebooks, behold now the hope and desire of going back to one's own country or returning to primal chaos of the man who looks forward to each new spring and does not perceive he is longing for his dissolution as elements imprisoned long for the source. What has the precursor precursed? It would be as in Shelley, although a subtler sphinx renew riddles of death Thebes never knew. Had not most of the 1482 letter to Swartza promised instruments of war? I have plans for destroying every fortress not founded upon rock, for making cannon, engines for attack or defense, ships which can resist the fire of cannon, armored cars which will enter the serried ranks of the enemy with their artillery, and behind these the infantry will be able to follow without opposition. Talent supplied more than his art in the service of Il Moro and Cesare Borgia, that Caesar, Machiavelli also would have enabled. In the floating utopia of high renaissance, the modern world, with its explosive potentialities, is born. So with person. In this dura, Inscribed 1500, Cusanus omnivoyant God-man becomes the deepest reflection of the mirrored self. As Eckhart had said in a passage that would stir Luther, God has become man in order that I may become God. Was that not the call of the Luther Bible to der herrlichen Freiheit der Kinder Gottes? The first history of music on records, the parlophone 2,000 years, paired with the Dufay trumpet Gloria already heard, Josquin's Et Incarnatus from the Missa Pange Lingua, and was made man. <laughs> Thus, Berlin Chorus and all, the Western incarnation takes up the cross of the world. Michelangelo in the storm to follow, tuba mirum spargen sonum, felt also in the tientos of Cabethon, must have dreamed sometimes of the Lorenzo de' Medici Florence of his youth. There, Baricelli had brought Gothic line to an ultimate clarity of nostalgia in joy. Leaves, waves, blown roses, the pure platonic nude, as Poliziano had described in La Giostra, that unfinished romance which carries in germ the whole future of paganizing poetry and art. A woman born of the waves, lovesome and free in every act, in her face more than human, wafted by lively zephyrs to the shore upon a shell, while heaven smiles upon her. You would have sworn the goddess came from the wave, gathering with her right hand her golden hair, the other lifted the sweet fruit to save from greedy spoil, and as she touched the shore with sacred feet, seen herbs and flowers pave the barren strand and marked 
with what light air three nymphs accost her and her coming hail and close invest her in a starry veil. Michelangelo could have remembered the music too. Isaac, not the brooding lamentation, but ballads sighed by the vials, as wistfully glad as the receding curves of Botticelli's shore. In that backward looking, even Michelangelo, or whoever after him, has been most partisan in the embattled grandeur of Promethean consciousness, might drop, like Milton's Adam and Eve, some natural tears. Since part of every soul must yearn, like the imprisoned elements, for a naive, anonymous grace, here, from Mary of Burgundy's Book of Hours, the daily reading in that same book become an allegorical window. Such quiet pre-selfhood lightens an English wedding fragment from the time. The maidens came when I was in my mother's bower. I had all that I would. The bailey beareth the bell away. The lily, the rose, the rose I lay. The silver is white, red is the gold. The robes they lay in fold, the bailey beareth the bell away, the lily, the rose, the rose I lay, and through the glass window shines the sun. How should I love, and I so young? The bailey beareth the bell away, the lily, the lily, the rose I lay. As frail, as bright, as the unmatched maiden of the other poem, as doe in April, that farth on the spray, Moder and maiden was never known but she. Well may, switch a lady, goddess Moder, bay. 